Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will discuss about the operation of the chopper circuit with RLE load. The basic operation we have discussed in the last video. Whenever you are going to apply the gate voltage to this switch, the switch will be turned on and this supply voltage will appear over here. So if this switch is turned on after a certain voltage drop across the switch, some positive voltage will appear over here and that positive voltage is going to reverse bias this diode. Okay, so what will be the direction of the flow of the current? The current is going to flow like this. This is the path of the current when your main switch is in the on state. When you are going to turn off this switch, the inductor will try to maintain the current in the same direction. So the direction of the current through the inductor was like this and it was increasing when your main switch was in the on state but now it is going to decrease. So initially the polarity of the voltage across the inductor was like this and when you are going to interrupt the current the polarity is going to become opposite and because of this negative voltage at this point your this diode will be forward biased and now the current is going to flow in this loop and the energy that was stored in the inductor that was half Li square now will be delivered to this this battery source E or will be dissipated across this resistance R and the flow of the current will be like this. So the inductor current may be continuous, may be discontinuous depending upon the value of the inductance. So if it is a continuous current, it means it is going to start from some initial value I1 in the steady state and it is going to reach to the I2 in the interval when your switch is in the on state and when you are going to turn off the switch, it is going to come back to this initial point that is I1 and in the next cycle it will be increasing again and when the switch will be turned off it will be decreasing. So in this we can say that it is the continuous current because it is not going to become zero at any instant of time. It is increasing when your switch is in the on state, it has the positive slope and it is decreasing when your switch is in the off state. Right. So this is the continuous current but if the value of the inductance is small then the current uh, may be like that that it is going to increase from zero up to this point and then it is going to become uh, zero before the end of the off interval. So in this case we say that current is discontinuous. So we are going to discuss the operation of this chopper circuit with RLE load in detail and for that we are going to make certain assumptions. First of all we will be assuming that, that uh, there is no average voltage across this inductor right it is going to act as the short circuit there is no voltage drop average voltage across this inductor so for that we can say that uh, in one switching cycle the vo average voltage across the inductor is zero so we can write down this expression that is representing the average voltage across the inductor for the stable operation when the current is going to increase from this point let's suppose i1 to i2 so the change in current delta i when the switch is in the closed state should be equal to the change in current over here um, in when the switch is in the off state. If that is equal delta i in this case and delta i in this case if they are equal then it means that uh, you have the stable operation because you are reaching back to the initial point right. So this is the positive let's suppose delta i and this will be negative delta i or sum of these two should be equal to zero for this stable operation and your current is periodic so that you can see over here another assumption we will be assuming that our inductor current is periodic that is i l t plus t will be equal to i l t and um, the change in the current when your switch is closed plus the change in the current when your switch is in the open state that is equal to zero for this stable operation right so your switch is turned on for the interval d into ts and switch is off for the interval d prime into ts where total time is this one ts that is based upon the uh, switching frequency and 1 over fs will be equal to this switching time out of that your switch will be in on state for this time t on which is equal to dts and we have discussed it in the last video so we are going to make this assumption that inductor current is periodic 
and um, the change in current in the closed and the open state, the sum of these two changes will be equal to 0 for this stable operation. And what will be the average inductor current? The average inductor current can be sketched somewhat like that. That will be somewhere in between the maximum and the minimum value. Let's suppose this value is I2, this value is I1. So average current can be roughly calculated with the help of this expression that is I1 plus I2 divided by 2 will give you the average current. Okay, if there is the capacitor in the um, circuit, so then the average capacitor current will be considered as 0 and um, we will be using this expression. Fourth assumption is that that inductor current will be assumed linear in on and the off interval to simplify the analysis and this will be possible in practice when the switching frequency is very high. You are familiar with the basic operation of the RL circuit when you are going to switch on the current is going to increase somewhat like this and then when you are going to turn it off the current will be uh, decreasing like that but we are going to operate this switch at a very high frequency so because of uh, that one you can say that uh, the current is linearly increasing and linearly decaying right and why we are going to assume that at first of all we can easily express this current in the mathematical form if it is the linear one our analysis will become simpler right and we operate our converter circuits at the high frequency so this linear assumption of the current variation is very suitable okay so with these assumption uh, we will uh, move towards the uh, discussion of the operation of the chopper circuit with the rle load so there are two modes of operation one in which this switch is in the on state and this is the path of the current that is indicated over here right and the second mode is that when this switch main switch is in the off state at that time your this diode will be turned on to complete the path of the current and how it will be turned on that i discussed previously because of the negative polarity applied by the inductor so in the on state of the switch the polarity of the voltage across the inductor is like that and um, the current let's let's assume that we are in the steady state so current in the inductor will be increasing like that starting from this minimum current to the maximum current i2 so this is the uh, current in the inductor in the on state right that is equal to dts and when you are going to turn off this switch there will be the negative voltage that will be appearing across the inductor this point will become minus this will become positive and because of the negative sign over here this diode will be turned on and now this loop will be active right and in that case the energy that was stored in the inductor will be decaying and the current will be decreasing like this right so in the off state we have the negative slope and in the on state we have the positive slope in the on state of the switch your inductor is going to act as the load because it is storing the energy taking it from the source but in the second mode of operation when your switch is in the off state your inductor is going to act as the source and it is dissipating the energy across this resistance and delivering the energy to this source and whatever was stored in this inductor so this is going to act as a source in the second mode of operation and in the first mode of operation it is going to act as a load depending upon the value of the inductance the shape of the waveform uh, of the inductor current can be sketched this is the continuous current assuming that that inductance is very high or l by r ratio is quite large as compared to 1 and if this inductance is small then you can say the current may be discontinuous depending upon the time constant of your circuit it is going to become 0 um, before the off cycle ends so in that case this will be your on time the total off time is this one but the time of conduction for your di uh, diode will be this one it will be conducting only for the time t2 because the whole of the energy that was stored in the inductor has been dissipated so your diode will be conducting only in this interval and then your diode is going to become off so this is the discontinuous current so now uh, analyze the um, continuous uh, current assuming that that circuit is in the continuous uh, operation mode so we can write down the equation for this loop when your switch is in the on state so for that we can say the supply voltage Vg must be equal to the voltage across this resistance that will be R into I1. Let's assume that this current is I1 and the voltage across the inductor that is LDI by DT and this voltage E. So from here uh, after rearranging we can write down this equation and uh, this is the first order differential equation and you can find out this current I1 and you can write it like that where this K1 is the constant 
and can be determined using the initial conditions. So now let's see how we can uh, determine this k1. So we are going to look at the time and uh, look at the waveform at time t is equal to 0. So over here when time t is equal to 0, so the current in your inductor is um, i1 so that you can see at time t is equal to 0 i1 of t that is equal to i1 so i can say i1 of 0 is equal to i1 so using this initial condition over here in this equation this can be written as that this part is equal to i1 equal to this part and we can solve it for k1 so k1 will be given by this expression now we can use this k1 over here and we can write down the expression for the uh, current right so uh, sorry this k1 can be used over here so um, this equation a now can be written like this by using the expression for the k1 from here and if we simplify it we can rearrange so this is the equation that is defining the current in the interval uh, t between 0 and dts that is the on time starting from 0 and less than or equal to dts okay so in this uh, um, what is this um, l by r we can this is basically the time constant of the inductor circuit so we can write it in terms of the tau so writing in terms of the tau you will get this expression right okay now um, looking at the final condition at time t is equal to t on your current in the circuit is equal to i2 so let's go back and look at um, over here in this uh, waveform so this is the time the end of the on interval so this is the t on point and at this point what is the current the current is i2 so at the time dts or is equal to t on the current in your circuit is i2 so we can use this as a final condition and uh, we can uh, write down an equation for the current at the end of the switching interval so t is equal to t on i1 of t at that point will be equal to i2 so we will be using this one over here and we will be replacing this t with the t on so we can write down the expression for the current i2 where i2 is the maximum current and i1 is the minimum inductor current in one switching cycle so we are targeting to find out an expression for i1 and i2 right this one the minimum current and the maximum current of the inductor now let's uh, look at the second uh, mode of operation in which our switch will be in the off state as soon as it will be off the inductor will apply the negative voltage over here because you are going to interrupt the current in the inductor and you know that the inductor voltage is this one l into di by dt so as this is going to be very high you're trying to interrupt the current so very high negative voltage is going to appear over here and that is going to turn on your diode right so um, once the diode is turned on so this loop will be active so for the interval starting from uh, this point till this point uh, the current is decreasing because the energy stored in your inductor half l i square that is being dissipated now so uh, for this part we can write down um, we can draw the circuit like this this one so the current is going to flow through the diode let's suppose that this current is i2 okay and this is the interval starting from this point t on till the uh, ts uh, for the continuous conduction mode starting from here till this point right so we are now going to analyze this part we are going to write down the equation for this one so your circuit has two states one state when your switch is in the on state the other state when your main switch is in the off state but your diode is in the on so two states of the circuits and there are two different equations so for the uh, second part we have this equation right and we assume that there is no voltage drop across the diode it is an um, ideal one there is the zero voltage drop so we can write down the equation that l di by dt that is uh, di2 by dt plus i2 into r plus this uh, emf or the voltage that should be equal to zero okay so rearranging this equation you are going to get this one and this is the differential equation its solution is um, given like this and in this you have this constant k2 that can be evaluated based upon the circuit conditions so at time t is equal to t on that is the initial condition for this state that is um, this one at time t is equal to t on what's the current the current is i2 right this one so uh, we are going to use this condition at i2 at t on is equal to i2 so using this over here this can be written on i2 and at that time we will be replacing this t with t on and simplifying we will be getting the expression for k2 now we can use this k2 over here and we can find out the instantaneous current of your inductor in the interval t on to ts okay so now um, 
if we use this equation 4 over here we can write down the expression for the current for the second interval when your main switch is in the off state and uh, that is given like that now you can go through these steps um, we are going to represent it in terms of the inductor time constant that is l by r so replacing it with that and simplifying this one so you can go through these steps and finally we can write down the expression for the current in the second state right okay now applying the um, final condition at time t is equal to th that is the end of the cycle your i2 will be approaching to i1 or we can say i2 at t of s will be equal to i1 because your current is going to be like this starting from i2 coming back to i1 continuous current at the end of the cycle right so now we are going to use this condition in this expression so i2 will be replaced with i1 right and um, this um, time will be replaced with um, ts so t on minus ts will be equal to minus t off and similarly over here when you are going to consider it ts so it can be written as minus t off right so we have this expression for the um, i1 now uh, using this expression right and um, the expression that we have already derived for the i2 that is this one so from uh, these two um, we can work and we can eliminate i1 and we can have an expression for the i2 so if we um, uh, eliminate i2 we will have to um, use this one over here and similarly we can solve these equations such that the i1 is eliminated so over here uh, we are going to use the expression for i2 we are eliminating this one so using the expression of the i2 that we have previously uh, derived so you will get this equation and then there are certain mathematical steps you can go through it uh, yourself by pausing this video and finally you are going to get the expression for the i1 that is the initial current of the inductor starting current of the inductor and that can be further simplified by using uh, this one that that is d plus d prime is equal to 1 t on plus t off is equal to ts or we can say dts plus d prime into ts that is equal to ts so using these fundamental uh, equations you can finally drive this expression for the current i1 that is the current at the start um, of the cycle right the minimum current of your inductor now using the equations those we have already uh, derived uh, we have derived this in equation 3 i expression for the i2 now we can uh, work for the expression of i2 we have derived i1 so using this i1 over here and sorry um, simplifying um, this expression by using the i1 from the equation 7 and finally we can get the expression for the current i2 so through this derivation, uh, derivation based upon the input voltage vg resistance on time on time is basically based upon your duty cycle the duty cycle is the control part of your um, chopper circuit if i say this is the chopper it has certain input voltage it, it is going to give you certain output voltage and its control port is going to control the output voltage and when you will be changing the duty cycle so t on that is equal to d into ts that will be changed the on and off time of your switch will be changed so i2 and is the maximum current and i1 is the minimum current right so now let's go back and look at this circuit um, uh, waveform this we have derived an expression for i1 we have derived an expression for i2 so now how we can find out the current ripple delta i this delta i will be equal to i2 minus i1 right so now let's uh, find out the ripple so for ripple current uh, we are going to write down this one delta i is equal to i2 minus i1 we have derived the expression for i2 and the i1 using the values from those expressions and then finally simplifying and using these uh, definitions that is t on is equal to dts and tf is equal to d prime ts and d plus d prime is equal to 1 so you will um, reach to this expression for the delta i right okay now um, when this uh, ripple will be maximum you can use the maxima minima theorem and um, with the help of that one you can develop a condition at this this delta i is going to be the maximum one right what is the variable over here if the main thing that is d the duty cycle that is the control parameter if you are changing the duty cycle so uh, the delta i will be changing the other parameters are constant because that depends upon your circuit um, inductance and the resistance ts is the total um, time represent corresponding to your switching frequency and this is your applied voltage this is the resistance of your circuit so variable part is the d1 so you can change that one to control the delta i 
so if you differentiate this equation with respect to uh, de uh, duty cycle and set it equal to zero you can find out the condition for the maximum value of the delta i and that um, will give you that at duty cycle equal to 50 percent you are going to get this derivative the um, uh, this delta i to be the maximum one right so if the first derivative is taken and then uh, it is set equal to zero condition is drive and then it is verified by taking the second derivative of the um, equation so you are well familiar with the maxima minima theorem that is uh, applied over here to find out the value for d for the maximum value of the delta i so um, at uh, duty cycle equal to 0.5 your delta i is maximum so now we are going to find out the delta maximum from this equation that delta i max will be equal to uh, what we are going to do we are going to replace this d with 0.5 right and uh, then we are going to simplify this expression so simplifying this one you can go through um, these mathematical steps by pausing the video so now uh, finally it can be uh, written like this so over here you can see we can um, this is the tangent hyperbolic um, it can be written in terms of tangent hyperbolic so vg by r this will be equal to tangent hyperbolic of uh, this part divided by 2 because tangent hyperbolic x by 2 is equal to 1 minus e raised power minus x divided by 1 plus e raised power minus x so you can write it in terms of uh, tangent hyperbolic and if you simplify this one so this will be equal to 0.25 and um, 0.25 into ts by tau now using the values for the tau and the ts ts is 1 by f right and um, um, this tau can be then written as um, l by r so it can be written as r by 4 fl so this is the expression for the um, delta i max that is giving you information about the uh, ripple in the current right so if i sketch the current over here this is i1 this is i2 so delta i is the um, difference of these two that will be the ripple current so ripple current in the um, chopper circuit with rle load with the high value of the inductance can be calculated with the help of uh, this expression right so um, for the continuous conduction mode we have seen that that how we can uh, calculate uh, how we can represent the current in the circuit in the on state and in the off state and then uh, we have derived expression for i2 and i1 that is the maximum current and the minimum current of your inductor and with the help of that one we have calculated the ripple current so this procedure will be very useful when we will be later on discussing the um, uh, buck converter boost converter buck boost converter chuck converter so we will be utilizing these concepts over there so for the time being we have discussed it with the rle load in the next video we will uh, go through the detailed analysis in the uh, discontinuous conduction uh, mode so this video is uh, uh, dedicated to the continuous conduction mode that's all from this video thank you very much